Good morning, you guys. I got a late start this morning. And I just got busted coming in. I just saw a big doe with a yearling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the head of this holler, like I always do. I'm going to sit there and see if that buck's following. Because nine chances out of ten he is. The wind is swirling in from the northwest this morning. So I hadn't been, I got to this point right here and everything was cool. cool. I'm almost three quarters of a mile in. And all of a sudden, up to my right, that old goat smelled me. So that's just the way it goes. But anyway, we're going to go up here, we're going to sit down, and we're going to see if that buck follows them deer right there. Because I'm sure if somebody ain't shot him, he's here somewhere. So you guys, them two deer that I just saw right there, I've been seeing them all summer. That baby was born in here last year. So what they were doing this morning was going up this ridge to go to bed. They're coming out of the grasslands down in the valley. It's like they always do. Hopefully though, if somebody ain't shot that buck, it's always with them. I might get to take a closer look at him. I know he's at least a nine or a ten pointer. I've seen him several times. But on the game camera. So hopefully the wind won't change on me again. The wind started swirling like this and it went across the ridge or headed west. And then that's how them deer smelled me. So that's just the way it goes. I mean, you can have all the, the uh, best laid plans that you've got, but that don't mean a deer is going to go along with your plans, does it? <laughs> no. So I'll hang out at this particular station right here for about an hour, maybe two hours. Then I'll head on up to my big shelter because it's supposed to start raining. And it looks like it's going to. Gonna be a cold food for breakfast, you all. But I can put a little heat with it. telling you guys be sure you check out my buddies over at Bang Steel Bang Steel So since those does ran off you guys, I haven't seen anything. I moved to the Taj Mahal. Just the way it goes. Least that hot sauce will dilate them arteries, keep that blood pumping. <clears throat> like I said, my old buddy Dan. Over at Bang Steel sent me this spoon and knife right here. Spoon, knife, and fork. If you're in the area and you need some training on long range shooting, check out Bang Steel.
You guys have been calling there several times this morning. Just a minute ago, I didn't have the camera on. Two big old fox squirrels come running through the woods right here, and they just kept going in that direction. And all of a sudden, over on that ridge over there in front of me, that really hairy bedding ridge, I heard a buck snort. I heard one grunt. Or let's put it this way, I think it was. It sure sounded like one. But it looks like the weather may change to rain here in a few minutes. I don't know. But we'll see. It's supposed to get really bad here in the next couple of days. But that, that ridge over there you see there in front of me. There's really no clear shot on it over there at all. It's all brush, it's all trees. And uh, I've sat here before and seen plenty of deer go through there. They go into the, to their bedding areas and they're just sneaking through the woods. They won't come through these wide open field uh, woods here unless it's just, unless that old buck's just tr tracking a doe down. They just won't do it, they're just too smart. Now a young, a young buck will, that ain't got no brains in his pumpkin head. Them old timers that I'm looking for, they won't do it. But it's about 200 yards from where I'm sitting over to that other ridge over there where you can, where it sort of curves over the other way. It's about 200 yards. So, what I'm going to do here in a few minutes is get inside the shelter and uh, make me something to eat. But I, I wish I'd had the camera turned on them two big fox squirrels, two great big fox squirrels, I mean big old squirrels, come running through the woods. Alright you all, it's going to be coffee and soup this morning, or this afternoon. Maybe that'll call us in a deer. Coffee and soup, so I'll get my coffee pot over here and get it, get it ready to make some coffee in. Find what I done with that bottle I just opened. There we go. Of course, we can set that right there. No, we can't set that right there, Michael. Looks like that weather's gonna get nasty out there, you guys. That's the way it happens. Macaroni and cheese.
One thing about you all, a good hot meal sure comes in handy when you're hunting. Especially when you didn't have no breakfast. What I've got right here, you all, is uh, macaroni and cheese with uh, vegetable soup. Dried vegetable soup. Good stuff. And I'm making me a good hot cup of coffee. All right, you guys, I told you I heard a deer there a minute ago. And I'm watching a spike buck go up that ridge right over right now. You won't be able to see it on camera. But I was sitting there eating my lunch. And I just happened to look right out of the peripheral vision. And I saw something moving. Sure enough, there goes a spike buck right there. He's still standing right over there. I could kill that deer easy, you guys. He's just sitting there eating acorns. But I know you guys can't see him. But maybe, maybe there's something that there's some more deer with him. I was, I've been grunting all morning long, and I heard this deer, I told you a minute ago, I heard this deer. That deer right there is ex right at, I've got a tree over there that's marked at 100 yards because I've shot him from here before. And uh, that's exactly where he's at, right there at that 100 yard mark. And he's got his tail turned right toward me and he's eating acorns. But he's just got two little spikes on his head. I could literally drop him right where he's standing. So we're not going to make any noise. Hopefully the wind don't change. So he's going to ease on up into the up. Okay, he's going on out of sight, right into the woods. Right on the edge of the woods. I could kill him right now. But that's not the deer I'm looking for not the deer I'm looking for. So maybe the deer I'm looking for will come along. Now I did get my doe bleed out there a minute ago, guys, and bleed it a little bit. And I'm pretty sure that that deer heard me because I heard it grunt right over there. So that just goes to show me that's three deer I've seen this morning. Two of them are does and, and this young buck right here. But the big guy, he's in here somewhere if the wind don't change. So there's one thing about it, you all. Where you see that spike buck right there, there's some does around there somewhere. And I'll bet you a nickel that the big buck's with them. Well, that's coming from the other direction. The ones I seen this morning went that way. But that deer's going right up there and lay down in that thick brush, I'll guarantee he is. Just about the time I'm shoving food in my face, I look over there and I see a deer. And you all, I've said this before, I'll say it again. One of the reasons I hunt the high country where nobody else goes is these deer are gonna come here. And, th and the reason they do, they, they, they'll come from the grasslands up to this very, very steep mountainside and they'll stay in here all day long and nobody especially these uh, 
chubby little guys that ride their four wheelers around all the time, they can't get there. So they will never walk there. But if you will come in here and make you a stand in this high country, these deer come in here to lay down for the day. That's how I seen that big buck there last week and missed it. So you're down from the top. If people come out the top of the mountain where it's level, you know it's easy to walk. You can come out the top, walk out through there, you'll jump deer. You'll scare them down over on either the north side or the south side of the mountain. The deer will come down in here about 100 yards, 200 yards like I'm sitting down below the top. And that's the, one of the reasons that I like to hunt the high country because the big deer, mossy horns, will be right in here somewhere laying around getting ready for the for to hunt him a doe up come dark probably but it's about 11 o'clock so that deer moving through here i heard it snored over a minute ago or grunt back at me while i was grunting at it see i've got this grunt call here and i've been using it all morning long but that don't mean that deer will come straight to you now i'm not going to call that deer back over here because if i do he will he will eventually smell me and when he does, he will spook other. He will spook every other deer over there as well. He will tell them. He will tell them I'm here. I could probably call him up, and he will come back, and and I could let you guys see that deer. But since I'm not going to shoot that little deer, I don't want him to spook the rest of the deer off. And yet they haven't smelled me yet. So, right at the present time, the the wind is coming from the southeast, and it's taking my scent down the mountain. Well, you all, we've been here another two hours. I'm just sitting right inside the shelter here, out of sight, because anything that comes from this direction, if I'm sitting out there in, in, in my yard, most of the time them deer will see me before I see them. So if I'm sitting inside here, they'll walk on by. Hopefully they won't smell me. Now, why did I pass on that deer right there I saw this morning? I'm pretty sure that was a yearling spike. That's what it looked like. It looked, didn't look like the horns were over that long. Now, I have seen three-year-old deer, you guys, with spikes on them 12 inches long. And that's the only kind of horn they'll ever have on them. Whatever reason, I don't know whether it's genetics or what. But, uh, so you know, there's a big controversy sometimes over spike bucks and, and uh, why they don't have any other horns besides spikes. Then I've seen two-year-olds with, four, with forked horns. So that's just sometimes the way it goes. I don't really need a deer this year. I've got plenty of deer left over from last year. But uh, I got a friend who likes jerky and uh, I like to uh, make jerky for them friends sometimes. So what I'm looking for is that buck deer that I missed with my muzzleloader. I know he's in here somewhere, somebody ain't shot him. But I'm seeing all kind of sign all around this shelter. And of course it's, at, in, it's in nighttime sometimes when I'm asleep, but uh, anyway, that's the reason I passed that little old deer up right there. Years ago, guys, that deer had been dead in a door, he'd been dead on a doordale before he took three steps after I seen him horns. But uh, I guess I'm taking after my buddy Frank. <laughs> He's rubbing off on me. So anyway, let the little old deer run, let him live two or three more years, he might be a great big deer. Well, guys, it's been a long day. I got a half an hour before it's pitch dark. I've been here since 7.30, it gets dark at 5.30. This is, the, this is the half an hour where I just might see a deer. But anyway, you guys, if I do see anything else, I will let you guys see it if I happen to shoot it, okay? Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate hanging out with me. This is the reason that I hunt the high country. The deer are here if they would just come my way and, the, and it had the right rack on its head today I'd drag that booger home may the good Lord bless you have yourself a wonderful day and if you don't mind share my video